The 6-5 is live at Broadcom headquarters in San Jose, California. It is deal close day between Broadcom and VMware. Super exciting day, Daniel. I mean, this is a historic day, huge deal, impacting so many different constituents out there. And the 6-5 has been all the way along for the ride. Yeah, we've been chronicling it. You know, 60 plus billion dollar deal, bringing together a leader in hardware, a leader in software to create the future and telling, you know, here we have some of the leaders current. We've talked to CEO and President Hak Tan, but we're going right. to talk to a number of the different leaders about where they see this going, the vision. Of course, we're going to ask the hard questions as well as try to get inside what's going on so that everyone out there understands a little more what this deal means. Yeah, so Dan, both of our uh, analyst companies have been huge believers in the hybrid multi-cloud and you know, uh, you know I love to take victory laps about something that I talked about 10 years ago, and that is that the hybrid multi-cloud uh, is real, yep. right? And that cloud workloads would be run everywhere, right? On premises, uh, in the public cloud, on the edge, multiple uh, types of, of clouds, and there's not been a Fortune 500 CIO that isn't running uh, multiple applications across multiple clouds. So. It'd be a great time to bring in our our guest, Krish Runs, VMware Cloud Foundation. Welcome to the 6.5, first time on the show, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat, uh, thank you, Dan. I'm glad to be here. Good to be here, congratulations yeah. on the big day. Yeah, first of all, I have to say I'm very excited to be here. Uh, start this uh, new chapter in VMware's journey with Broadcom. Um, I have to say, over the past, um, year or so, I've been working very closely with the Hawk and team in planning out the integration of the two companies. Yeah. And one of the things that really impressed me is the amount of time that Hawk spent with the VMware customers, right. uh, listening to their requirements and concerns. And as you heard uh, today, um, as a result of all those conversations, uh, he has decided to double down on right. VMware's hybrid cloud strategy uh, if anything, with more focus and additional investment. Yeah, and it, I'm, you don't mind me adding, I mean, that's exactly what he said in the run-up to the to the deal close, and it's yeah. exactly uh, what sh what y'all are are doing. Yeah, and exactly. um, I really appreciated all the openness too. You know, all the things that were put on in public record mm -hmm. uh, on on things that were going to happen on around the public cloud. So sorry to interrupt, my friend. No, you know, look, um, this deal. Mm -hmm. you know, we talked a lot to Hawk about how, yeah. how complicated it is, but it's, it's done. And mm -hmm. so here you are, you're yes. the GM of VMware's Cloud Foundation, yes. and we've been listening to him talk about how Broadcom has this vision of enabling companies to you know, accelerate their private and hybrid cloud strategies. Talk a little bit about the role that your yeah. group, that you're leading, okay. uh, what, the, what role is it expecting to play in enabling Hawk to realize this vision? The VCF division is um, responsible for delivering our hybrid cloud infrastructure software. And um, customers can take that software, modernize their infrastructure by deploying it on-premise. They can deploy a private cloud, have a cloud operating model. They can also consume it as a managed service. So think of it as a VCF as a service uh, from a variety of our partners. We have a large ecosystem of partners, including the hyperscalers. So combining the on-prem deployment with VCF, with VCF running as a service, bringing it together into a hybrid cloud model, that's what our customers really love. And um, customers not only look to us for uh, resiliency of the infrastructure, security of the infrastructure, but more importantly, they are looking for cloud agility, which means the ability to move their workloads around the different locations, whether it is public cloud, on-prem, you can move your workloads uh, based on your needs, whether you want to move it to the public cloud or even back on-prem uh, as you need it. Yeah, I mean, enterprises are looking for a common way to deploy applications, uh, do networking, uh, secure that data, and as we saw it explore uh, data management. Mm -hmm. I asked Hawk a, a little bit about uh, NSX Plus that you announced at, at Explore. 
But can you talk a little bit more, how does NSX fit into the future of the portfolio and delivering hybrid multi-cloud value? Yeah, let's maybe take a step back and um, look at what customers are doing. Um, you know, customers are going through digital transformation in the enterprise, and as a result of this, there is a huge explosion in the number and types of applications that are being developed. And most of these new generation of applications are uh, data intensive, right? And, and also the app applications are becoming more distributed. Customers want to take the applications and run either the whole application or parts of the application closer to where the data is being generated. Right. And in many cases, maybe even closer to their end users. Right. So the perimeter of the data center that used to be well defined in the past is now getting a lot more diffused because the applications are getting pushed out to the public cloud, to the edge, yeah. and the data center. And so our solution provides a very unique set of capabilities with the same platform running in all these locations, tying it all together with NSX, right. providing the connectivity and also the security. NSX has this capability where you can set policies for securing your environment, but you can set it once and then it makes sure that all the endpoints are secured the same way. So that's exactly what we announced as NSX Plus in the Vegas uh, Explore event. Yeah, I mean today, uh, I mean companies literally have a separate networking team for each of their clouds, which yeah. is not efficient, doesn't right. make sense, and in some ways, because you're stringing together different types of uh, security, potentially even insecure. Yeah, that's the beauty of the software-defined networking with right. NSX, that ties it all together with one common yeah. uh, foundation. Yeah. So it's really interesting with uh, the, the combined Broadcom VMware, mm -hmm. you really do have leaders across hardware and, and software, yeah. and of course this full stack requires both, mm -hmm. and uh, you know security has probably become one of the preeminent discussion points mm -hmm. uh, for enterprises around the globe. As AI has become the trend, mm -hmm. the ability to make sure data is protected, to make sure that it's resilient, to make sure it's sovereign, all those things are big considerations. And of course, Broadcom is, is, is promising to lean in mm -hmm. and create a more secure uh, set of capabilities. And, and, and for your business, for VCF, mm -hmm. I'm genuinely curious kind of on the security innovation. Um, how does being Broadcom and VMware drive your strategy as leading VCF and drive your innovation for security within the platform? Yeah, I mean, there is no question that uh, security is important to our customers and we'll continue to invest and innovate around security. And I'll give you um, maybe, uh, you know, two things to think about uh, in, the, in the area of security. The first thing is about early detection and prevention. And the second bucket is around rapid recovery. Right, so perimeter-based versus yeah. once they're in, what do I do? Exactly, yeah. so in both areas, we are going to innovate. On the first one, uh, as an example, you know, the threat actors come into your infrastructure, they actually lay in wait, they move around, they get themselves set up, then they do the malicious attack. Right. And with our NSX technology, we are able to detect um, these malicious behaviors ahead of uh, the action that they take. So we are able to detect, isolate, and neutralize uh, these things with uh, the NSX technology. That's on the detect and prevent side. Then we have a new solution that we announced a year ago around uh, ransomware recovery. Right. And this is a very highly uh, differentiated solution with the hybrid cloud underpinning that customers love. And what we do with that is because of the hybrid cloud enablement that we have, we actually bring up a isolated environment in the cloud that is separate from the potentially mm -hmm. um, infected uh, infrastructure that the customer might have. And we also detect which version of their application uh, is pristine and we are able to bring that up 
right. very quickly while the customer is working on cleaning up their environment in a very isolated uh, cloud deployment you can bring up and get the apps running as quickly as possible. And it is amazing how on fire the data management uh, business is today. I mean, with the, whether it's you know, hacking as a service or mm -hmm. you know, nation state budgets, now it's just incredible to see. And quite frankly, you know, when you have more workloads working in more places, your, your, basically your threat matrix goes, goes up. Correct, so. and, and that's why the combination of our vSAN technology, uh, which is all around virtualized storage, right. plus new data management services that uh, we have been announcing uh, here in the past uh, few months. Combination of the two really focuses on being able to protect the data, but also deal with immense amounts of data that is being generated by these applications, and then the NSX technology providing the perimeter uh, security is what makes the whole right. thing work. Krish, I'd like to, to pivot to, I'll call this roadmap strategy. I'm not going to ask you your exact roadmap. Yes. Oh, come on. And, well, we could if you'd like to share with us, but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going <laughs> to <know>. ask. <laughs> but um, you now have the combined assets of, of Broadcom and VMware yeah. that cross a lot of software and a lot of hardware. And looking forward at future challenges mm -hmm. uh, that you think your customers might have, what is going to be your approach? What's going to be your strategy for what you're going to work on uh, with this combined uh, entity. Yeah, I mean, um, so if you look at our mission for the VCF division, our mission is to enable our customers to deploy a hybrid cloud computing infrastructure um, using our software. So if you look at the challenges they have, our innovation is going to focus on um, in three areas. Number one, it's about making it easy for customers to deploy and run the hybrid cloud. Right. And you'll see continued investment and focus on making it uh, simpler for customers to deploy the software, easy to manage, and easy to lifecycle. Right. The second piece is around consumption of the infrastructure. Make it really easy for developers to consume the infrastructure when they develop the applications. And so our platform is pretty unique in the sense that from a single platform, we are able to support VMs and containers orchestrated with Kubernetes, and that's the area that uh, you know, developers uh, are looking for, Kubernetes-based consumption, whether it's the development teams or the DevOps teams. The third area is to continue to enhance our compute platform, vSphere, which is at the core of uh, VCF, uh, to support the new types of applications. Applications uh, are pushing the boundary on latency. Right. Right, real-time applications. Uh, applications are dealing with a lot of data-intensive processing. So we are continuing to push uh, to keep our platform current so that customers can develop their new generation of applications on it. Krish, uh, Hawk was very excited mm -hmm. about VCF, I think he, <laughs> he mentioned it several times in our conversation and, and, and exactly that sort of full stack yeah. and how it's going to enable you know, customers to get the benefit from mm -hmm. their infrastructure and their applications regardless of location, destination, right. Right. really leaned into that heavily. Pat, I, I have to say I'm, I'm somewhat shocked that we've had <laughs> a conversation though that has gone this long and we haven't talked about AI. I know. I did start to hear little uh, bite-sized pieces of it. We mentioned data management, data scale, mm -hmm. which again, really to benefit from AI, it's all about the ability to take advantage of massive data states. Yeah. And of course, data is everywhere, and multi-cloud and mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing at VMware plays a big role, but I think the people out there, and I, I, I know I was impressed with what you showed at VMware Explore mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, the, the path. And of course, now that you've um, made this deal and you know everything is subject to maybe little nips and tucks, can you talk a little bit about what you see mm -hmm. and uh, the role of VCF, uh, the plans for AI as you see them, and what customers can expect in terms of the opportunities with AI and VMware? So we announced this um, uh, private AI foundation yeah. in Vegas. And I think, uh, let me just talk a little bit about um, what private means. 
you know, people kind of sometimes confuse it with private cloud. Uh, private in the context of AI that we announce is all about the privacy of your data. Keeping your data private and secure. Because the last thing customers want is to take their intellectual property, the data that they have, and take it out and you know, really train a public model, right. <laughs> making that data and the intellectual property. Give all property that access to their competitors. To the competitors, yeah. right? And, and so for customers, it's very important to keep it private. And, and so that's our focus, is to really enable them to keep their data private and allow them to run AI processing closer to where their data is, right. not to take the data somewhere else. And so that's where our hybrid cloud strategy, if you think about it, plays well into it. You know, VCF, you can run it on-prem, or you can run it anywhere in the public cloud or in a service provider cloud. And VCF is optimized now for running AI workloads. So we had this big announcement, you saw Jensen on sure. the stage, yeah. right, in, uh, in, the, in the Explore. And it was the culmination of around two years of work, engineering work between the two companies. And we announced some fantastic results in terms of the performance of our stack running AI workloads enabled with their GPUs. And so you'll continue to see us innovate along those lines, more partners, coming to the ecosystem with us on top of VCF. So, you know, we'll be very focused on innovating around AI. One thing forward. that I really appreciated about what you brought out is Explore, about you, how you talked about the different parts of data that have to come together, and quite frankly, I think the industry was missing it up to this point. I remember distinctly you had a slide that showed ERP data, SCM, yes. CX, legal, I think your chief legal officer got on stage, exactly, exactly. Uh, product IP, and uh, while all customers might not be thinking exactly that today, it's 100% the future, right? And they're certainly not going to load all of this data yeah. that's been on-prem for 50 years yeah. and just start uh, loading it up uh, exactly. uh, and historically speaking, and if I look at the last 40 years, typically uh, given that you can manage this data and what's going on, that processing does happen as close to where that data is created exactly. uh, as, uh, as possible. So mm -hmm. I really did appreciate it, and I, I can't wait until you know, it goes GA, yeah. right? And, and enterprises can you know, I mean, crank out and add a value. Already deploying or early versions of it, right. and, and uh, you're exactly right. I think uh, you know one of the key examples that uh, we as a software company we have is the, uh, the coding piece of it, where we don't want to take our software <laughs> and take it public, right? We want exactly. to keep it pr proprietary, and, and so we want to run it on-prem on our stack, and we did that, and uh, we found huge uh, TCO improvements uh, by doing just that. Yeah. Well, Krish, I want to just thank you for spending some time with us. I think this conversation is in its early days mm -hmm. and how this is going to evolve is going to be something well you and I are going to be accountable to be covering for some time exactly. here. But uh, it's great that you covered the gambit, you yeah. know, from kind of core compute all the way through security and into, into AI, Krish. Exactly. And we want to wish you the best in this endeavor. Yeah. Uh, congratulations yeah. on getting this to fruition, and congratulations on the role leading VCF. Uh, let's have you back again soon. Yeah, excited to be here, and uh, thank you for yeah. doing this. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right, everyone, we're here at Broadcom headquarters, and it is Deal Day, and we want to thank you all for tuning in. Check out all the episodes of Deal Day coverage for the 6.5. We provide the analysis and the insights that you need to know about this deal, but for this episode, it's time for both Patrick and I to say goodbye. We'll see you all really soon. Thank you